go with Jess. Let's get Jess on. You've been getting some, so let's hear it for Jess. All right, give me your one of the common objections you're getting. The same, money is the common objection I always get. All right. All right, how much is your program? Um, 4,400. 4,400, okay. All right, great. So, cool. So, tell me the objection again, sorry, what is it? Money. Okay, great. So, it's the, so just want to explain that for me, just so I understand. Sorry, when you say the money, what do you mean by that? Uh, so, do you want me to just pretend that I'm giving... Yeah, you're the person, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, we dive in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... I really just can't. I've got so much going on right now. Like we're actually looking at buying a house. We're in the middle of that. I just can't afford it right now. It's a lot of money. Okay. All right. So is it only the money that's holding you back or is there something else? No, it's just, uh, it's really, is just the money and the timing. Okay. All right. So you're our goal that we had written down of what we wanted you to earn, what did we say that was that we wanted to achieve with you? Uh, like five grand a month. Five grand a month. And how much are you getting right now? Like 500 a month. All right, 500 a month. Okay. All right, so we can safely say for every month, if we would achieve this goal, every month that we don't have this, it's costing us $4,500 a month. Is that right? Yep. Could, could we, could we say that if you were already at five grand a month, then you would have the money? Yeah, for sure. Yep. All right. So for me, it's like the chicken before the egg, like, or the egg before the chicken. It's like, what, how do I get out of this spot if I need money to, uh, achieve this goal, but I don't have the money because I don't have the skills and the, you know, strategies that you're going to teach me to get the money. All right, so let me tell you this. If you uh, had the money, would you, if you had the 4,500, would you do it? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Do, do, do you believe that we can actually help you to get to five grand a month? In what time frame did you say we could achieve this? Um, six months. In six months. Okay. So do you believe that we can actually help you to achieve that in six months? Yeah. Like I think that, uh, like I trust that you've got a great program and, and that I think we'll get that. I guess I'm just not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. Okay. Really. All right. And why do you think that is? Um, oh, because I've been doing this business for a while and yeah, I just, I don't know. Maybe I just don't have it in me. Okay. So do you want to achieve this goal? Definitely. Yep. All right. Why is it important to you? Because some people I will say, let's be resourceful. Or let's be really honest about our finances. But other people say it's not the right time or the not, not the right thing right now. So, so I think it's important for us both to know first is why do you want to achieve this? Because I really just want to be able to not have to like I've, I need to go back to work next year when the kids are back at school and um yeah if I don't start making the money in my business I'm gonna have to go back to work and I really don't want to oh yeah what's your job what what don't you um, want to go back I work to? in a in a school in reception oh so you you saying you you don't want to do that anymore no how, how long you been there for um, six years. Wow, six years. Mm -hmm. So you're saying, um, how long have you got where if you only stay at $500 per month before you'd have to go back to that job? I would have to go back as soon as, um, as soon as the kids start like, so next year. I'm going to have to go back next year. As soon as they're, both the kids are at school, I'll have to be back working. Right. Wow. Yeah. So I've been off up until now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've really got no excuse to stay home anymore because the kids will be both at school. Yeah, right. And so if you don't achieve this goal, you're going to have to go back to that job. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Any other reason why it's important to you to achieve this goal? 
Um, I guess, yeah, it's just something I've been working on for a long time and something I've really wanted to create for myself. Um, and I just, I want to have that. I want to be able to have that life where I don't have to go to work. I can do my own thing. I can create money from home. I can, you know, work with the people I want to work with and have that freedom. Right. Can I ask how much they're paying you in the, uh, in the reception job? I've got no idea how much you'd pay in a reception job. Um, <laughs> I always ask these questions. Yeah, I know, but I don't know. I don't know how much does someone get paid in a reception job? Well, let's just say twenty dollars or twenty-five an hour. Go with that. Yeah. All right. Are you there full time or part time? Uh, part time. So you're getting, let's just say, do you think like five hundred a week there? Yep. Yep. Okay. So if you don't achieve this goal by February, March next year, did you say? Is that when by? Yep. Yep. Feb. Feb, that's when, if you don't have it by Feb, then you're going to be back in the school. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you want your 2022 to look like? I don't want to be sitting in that school reception office. All right. Can I share a story with you then? Yeah, sure. All right. So basically when I was, uh, I used to be a school teacher and I was getting one or two days a week at a school and I was going to school and I was wondering, I actually don't want to do this anymore, right? And I knew if I didn't actually uh, find a way to succeed as a coach, that that would be my destiny 40 years from now, right? So I got offered a program like this to help me to achieve a goal like the one you want to achieve. Now, I had a choice. Did I have the money? No, I actually didn't. I did not have the money. And I thought at the time that that was the thing as to why I couldn't change. And I asked myself this question. I thought, I said, I'm quite a spiritual person. I thought, does God or the universe really not want me to be doing what I want to be doing? Is that my true destiny? Is it God or the universe really saying, sorry, Luke, you're not meant to do the thing that you want to do? Do you believe that? Do you believe the universe has destined you to not have the life you want because of no. your current cards? No. No, I, I truly do believe that do, we can do, do, all do... You, do whatever we want to do. Right. Because very often the thing that we most don't want to do or the thing we're most fearful to do is actually the thing that if we did it, it would get us our goal. So mine was, I was fearful to ask my parents for help. Not everyone ever has parents that they can ask, right? But for me, I had to ask my parents. Mm. And so I asked both of them. And the first time I asked my mum, I remember that she actually, when I asked her, I said, Mom, could I have the money to do this course? She said, Luke, that's a stupid amount of money. And then she grabbed her cigarettes and went out the back and started smoking. And she said, we don't have the money. And in that moment, I just broke down and cried. And I went and cried in my bedroom. And I thought, am I really not meant to have the life that I want? Is this really my destiny? There's got to be, like, this can't be it. But... In that moment, I asked myself this, how bad do you want it, Luke? How bad do you want it? For some of us, we have to ask our parents. For some of us, it's a family member. For some of us, it's a friend. For some of us, it's getting a loan from somewhere. some of us, it's using money, refinancing the house. There's so many things that there's, there's a way, right? But the, but the obstacle is not what's in the, in the way. It is the way. So when I went back and talked to my mom, I said, Mom, I know this is an uncomfortable amount of money for you to lend me. I'm really sorry. I hate asking this. It kills me to ask you this. I don't want to ask it. I hate that I put myself in this position. I put myself here. That was not comfortable to own either. Mm -hmm. But I said I was serious about this and I was going to make it work and I was going to follow what I was told to achieve this goal. And because I trusted myself and the person that was helping me, she could see that. 
And she said, you know what, Luke? I'll believe you. I'll believe you and I'll pay this back. I said, do you know what happened after I borrowed this money from her and my dad? I walked out and it took me four months to pay them back fully. Three months where I never had to go back to the school again. And, well, you sort of need to know what's happening with me now. So, what would have happened if I didn't find a way? Where do you think I'd be? <laughs> You'd still be in the school. I'd still be in the school. Mm. I'd still be in the school. So, what separates people is not uh, their potential, it's not the amount of time they have, it's not how many kids they have, it's not the time of year, it's how bad do you want it? I do want it. I do want it. I just, it's just that, it's probably just that trusting of myself that stops me. A hundred percent. So let me tell you the science of why we don't trust ourselves. And this is where you're really stuck. Mm. The trust comes when, when it's low, there's only really two main reasons for it. Either that we've spent money somewhere else and it hasn't worked, right? So then we filter future decisions through that. Or the second reason why the trust is low is because we tell ourselves or we've told ourselves for so long we're gonna do things but that we don't follow through. Which one is it for you or is it both? I've been a gunner. A gunner. How long have you told yourself you're gonna do things and you don't do them? Tell me that. Like too long. Always. Amazing. Now, give, I'm, I'm really enlightened here. Can you please give me some examples of some of the gunner things? And let's see how you've totally destructed your self-trust. And it's not because you didn't have the ability that, that, it, that it couldn't be otherwise. It's because of a pattern. So tell me some of the things that you have told yourself that you were going to do when you didn't follow through on. I've told myself countless times that I'm going to actually build this business and then I, and then I don't. Mm -hmm. Um, I've told myself I'm going to get up every morning and go for a run and then I don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So can you, if, if I told myself for this long that I was going to build this business and never took the serious actions to do it, I wouldn't have any self-trust either. Mm. And you wouldn't trust me any more than you trust yourself because that's what it takes to trust ourselves and you can trust me because you know that i have your best interests at heart and i'm only going to get fulfillment from this when you write to me i'm now earning five grand a month and if i didn't think that you could i would have stopped this a long time ago this call because yeah. i've got too many other people i could be speaking to i got too many other people that need my help but if I know there's someone that has the ability and they're choosing to throw it away because of a pattern that could change in an instant, then I'm going to do what I can to help them change that. Yeah. So how do we get rid of the pattern? Well, let me tell you, for me, I got out of bullshitting myself because I was held to a higher standard. People's lives are the direct reflection of those opinions that they value. If you value my opinion or if you value getting help, then your results are going to be a direct reflection of that. You're, you, people will do way more for others than they will ever do for themselves. And if I'm playing on a tennis court and I'm playing someone who's a shitty tennis player and or if, I'm just, or if I've been a shitty tennis player and I'm hitting the ball from one end to, to nobody, I've got no reason to improve my game, do I? But if I play against Jess and just goes, hang on, Sally, where's your forehand? Where's your backhand? Why have you not turned up to training? Why have you not hit 50 forehands today? Why have you not done 20 serves today? All of a sudden, you're playing tennis a lot better. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably what, it's that accountability and, and support that I, you know, that I really think will help me get where I want to go. 100% because I won't take your stories. You buy them from you, but I'm not buying them. 
Yeah. I'm not buying them, right? If you tell a kid, the kid goes, I don't want to jump in the pool. I don't want to swim the other end. But the, but the swim coach goes, too bad. Get in and jump. That kid's in the pool. Mm. And for you, wouldn't you agree that's something clearly you'd get value from? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So if I tell you the actions, if I tell you what to do, how much time do you have available to work on this business per week right now? Right now, like probably five to 10 hours. All right. So I've got the actions for the five to 10 hours that's going to give you the, the results that you're asking for. This is what this person did. I showed you this testimonial. I showed you this success story. I'm not, they're not doing anything different. Is there any reason why you couldn't follow what these people have done? No, no, no reason. I can follow that. All right. Okay. And why must you follow it if we do this? Because if I don't want to go back and work in that office, <laughs> if I want to actually achieve what I want to achieve um, and prove to myself that I can do it. All right. Well, you decide seriously with me now. So I'll tell you if we think we should go further on this or not. You tell me. Do you want to work in the school the next 5, 10, 20, 30 years? Or do you want to make this business work? You tell me. I want to make the business work. Okay, great. So I need you to be 100% honest with me like you have been. Okay? And I want you to tell me honestly, how much do you currently have in your bank account? <laughs> I'm just imagining this particular person I was talking to. Well, yeah, I guess the money's there. It was just like oh. set aside for other things. That's all. Oh, okay. So now we know we're, we're moving, we're making progress here. Okay. So I really appreciate your honesty, by the way, because this allows you to make the decision to see if it is right for you. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but at least let's find out if we can. So the money is there. Tell me what specifically the other things were that you were going to put it into, possibly. Well, because we're buying a new house, so it was set aside for furniture for the new house. All right. What specific furniture? Uh, like a new couch, dining table, and a fridge. All right. Um, well, when are you moving in? In uh, six weeks. Okay. All right. And so with that furniture and the other things you're going to buy for the house, could that be financed on a on a loan or could you get an interest-free uh, option to pay it off with the company that's selling you the furniture? Yeah, yeah, that's an opportunity. That's a possibility, yep. Yep. Okay. So why wouldn't we do that? <laughs> can I throw another one at you? Well, we can, Go but on. I have to talk to my husband about it. Oh, okay. All right. That's fine. I understand that. So <laughs> I get that so often. <laughs> okay. Is it are we now up to the part where it's only your husband? Is this or is there anything else that we're missing that's holding you back? No, look, I really want to do this. I really do. And we do have the money sitting there. Um, but we had earmarked it for the furniture. So like I'll have to run it past him. Okay. All right. So, tell me this. Um, if you get it on finance, or if you don't, aren't you still getting the furniture? Yeah. We are. Like, let's just, wouldn't he be, <laughs> like, if you told me, honey, I'm put, taking five grand, I'm putting in, I, I'm putting it, 4,400, I'm putting in the stock market, it's going to be worth at least five grand a month, six months from now, so it's going to give me at least 10x ROI a year from now, and it's going to add at least 10 times in this account, wouldn't he be like, that's a great idea? Yeah, I think... I think if I, um, I think if I have the conversation with him and tell him that this is something I really want to do, he'll he will be fine. All right, but what if he says no? That screw him. I'm just going to do it anyway. <laughs> well, why would we? That's what I think. <laughs> All right. How long have you been married for? 
10 years. 10 years. Yeah. Right? You've been married for 10 years. Does your husband uh, trust you? Yeah. Of course he does. Yeah. Okay. And he would would he want you to stay in this job or does he want you to do what you love? Look, he's a little bit unsure about the whole about me spending money on something that that's that I'm not making a lot of money from, but he does trust me. So, yeah, I think All right. Cuz if I was in your shoes, my only issue would be that uh <laughs> your when it comes to achieving our goals, we don't want other people to be having their hands on the steering wheel when it's the car that I'm driving. So I think that <laughs> it would be a much better conversation to go, hey, honey, um, I want to let you know that I've really wanted to build this marketing business for such a long time. You know this. And I want you, uh, you know, I, I really have decided to go all in on this business. I know if I didn't go all in on it now and decide to learn what I need to learn to make this work, I'll never know. And I know that there's not a lot of past success there because that's what he would be filtering through. He's going to go, oh, well, sorry, you know, you haven't achieved anything in the past. Why would you achieve something in the future? And he would go, look at the stories you tell yourself and you never follow through. He's going to be judging you based on who you've been, not on what you can be. I'm just, just to break out of this for one second, but this is one of the biggest things that does come back to you with a lot of my clients. And it's interesting that I'll have single mums who don't have as much money as they did when they were married, who will come on board because they don't have to report to anyone and they can make that decision themselves. Married women are so much harder to get over the line. Yeah. Yeah. So I tell them this, I say, look, if you want to be successful in business, right? The person running the business needs to make the decision. Yeah. And I think you should decide what's more empowering for you. I think you should decide more for yourself, yes or no. Either I want to take this business seriously or I don't. But if I'm making my investment decisions based on, is this your money or is it his money? It's our money. It's our money. Well, when you say it's ours, did you contribute to it or is it his? <laughs> well, I contributed to it for sure, yeah. Yeah. Well, how much of the five grand did you contribute? All of it or some of it? Some of it. How much did you contribute? Um, I don't know. <laughs> this is important to chunk down because yeah. some women, they feel controlled around their money decisions because if it's not, sometimes it's not their money and they feel controlled or sometimes it is their money and they still feel controlled. So mm. how much of the money is yours? Yeah, so I probably contributed... Um, the majority of it because it's been a lot of, we've just set aside the money that I've made from my business. All right. So would you say 3,500? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So would you spend 3,500 of your money and 1,500 of his if your, if your kids needed this for their education or for some sort of emergency medical treatment? Oh yeah, of course. On my kids. Okay. So, your partner, we know, values the money being spent on your kids. Yeah. And you know, you also not only value that, but you value spending the money on yourself because you know the more you spend on yourself, the more you can have for your kids. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. So what would he say, and tell me the honest truth, if you spent the money now and then you went and told him and you said, hey, honey, I want to have a word with you. There's something I really want to share with you that I'm actually excited to share with you about. And I hope you're not too upset with me. But I really did something that was not for me, but it was not only for me, but it was for us. And you said, I actually had an opportunity. I spoke with Jess today and she is actually committed to me, to being all in with me, to helping me finally grow this business. I know I have not been all in on this or committed properly to this in the past. And I take full responsibility of that. And I knew though, if I didn't change this now, then I would be stuck in this job, in the reception job for the rest of my life. I'll be really unhappy. And I didn't want to be that way, not just for you, not just for me, sorry, but for you. Because I know if I'm not happy in myself, not only do I have less to give to myself, but I have less to give to you. And you deserve better than that. 
You deserve the best of me and you deserve my happiness. And so this was something that I wanted to gift to myself. I know in normal circumstances, I would normally have ran this past you before I invested in this, but I want to tell you the only reason why I didn't is because I was fearful that you might limit me. Not because you intentionally want to hurt me or make me play small or because you intentionally doubt me, but because I know you only want what's best for us and you ultimately would be only to protect me right? But I know there's another level of life beyond protection for both of us. And I want a level of happiness, of joy and abundance for both of us. And so I had to trust myself on this. And I had to trust the person who was helping me because I needed it to something to take action on this now because it was so important to me. And I hope that it's important to you as well. So I have invested five grand, right? 3,500 my money. I know 500 is yours, right? Into this program. And I know the money was for the four knit furniture, right? However, I know and I am committed to making this money back and far more. My goal is at least by month six to be earning five grand a month. And I know that means we're going to have to take this furniture out on interest-free repayments, right? On the, on the small deposit or on no deposit to pay the furniture back. But this is going to go up. This is like money. It's gone in the stock market. It will be going up now month on month. And these are my goals. And this is a gift I wanted to give to, for myself for my happiness. Because I know we could have furniture and we could have a house. But I wanted to build a home. And that starts with happiness with me, and it starts with me being able to give this gift to you as well. So can you support me on this? <laughs> I'm just going to laugh. What is that called in NLP when you just confuse the shit out of people? What's that? Oh, well, I just call like a whole confusion pattern, right? <laughs> but 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 I've, I've pretty much pasted... <laughs> I've paced and lead you through all of your emotions, all of your thoughts, and I've sold you on the why related to what you want. Yeah. Okay. So I say, let me tell you if you did this. If you did this to him, this is actually part of your breakthrough. If you can influence your partner after you've made this decision, then you can influence anyone. And this is a sign that you are no longer taking your stories from yourself, that you are now an executor, not a gunner. You're a doer. And if you handled this objection in yourself in this way, you're now 100% congruent to handle it for other people in this way. And that means you're no longer going to buy this bullcrap from yourself. And that means you're no longer going to buy it for others. And you're 100% congruent to handle any objection that comes in your face because you are so certain in the value of what you have. And you're such a big believer in the person that you know you want to help. And you know this is the best way to support them. Yeah. Right? So this is called being a business owner and being the person you want to attract, being the client you want to attract. And if you handle it this way now, you're going to send abundance back to you because vibrationally you don't get what you want, you attract who you are. Apple trees don't bear oranges. They bear oranges. They bear apples. Apple trees bear apples. So that's what I would recommend. You should decide if I want to do this. If I want to do it, I'm now going to decide to be an influencer as well, not someone that's going to be at the effect of other people's fear. Is your husband going to want to leave you if you did this? He won't leave me. Is he going to... What's the worst thing he's going to do? You know the truth. What's the worst thing he's going to do? He might... <clears throat> he might be a little pissed for a minute and wonder why I didn't talk to him to start with, but I, I do think he'll understand. And you're right. I just have to stand on my own two feet as well and just go for it. So, yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay, so you mentioned now you know the value, you know you want to do it. Are you willing to follow the actions that I said that we're going to do to achieve five grand a month? Yeah. And if you get stuck, are you going to go hide in your little cave or are you going to speak up? I'll, I'll speak up. And why will you speak up? Because I want this. Okay. And... When you're earning five grand a month, what's a little gift you're going to give to yourself? I'm I'm going to take the fa I'm going to take us all on a holiday, the family on a holiday. Wow, wow! I bet you're puzzling me. Happy to hear that. All right, great. So let's run. Cool. So now you know that you've got uh, you've made. You know that you've got the value. You know that you've, um, worst case scenario, your husband is going to just, you know, be a little pissed for a little while, but he'll be fine. He'll shake it off, right? I'm sure you're good at getting him out of a negative state, aren't you? <laughs> and 
all over it. And so, ready to uh, go in to lift this rocket off together. Yep. All right. Let's do it. All right. Yay. <laughs> we did it. She did it. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> that, was so funny. Oh, that was entertaining, everyone. I was like, throwing you so many objections. What's that? Throwing you so many objections. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. So I think that's good for the partner. Is like one standard is like, what's the worst thing that would happen if you did did it without telling him? If you, I think that prepares them, and then you see what it really would be.